Google has been found to be an illegal monopoly. A federal judge in the United States ruled saying that Google is a monopolist and it has acted as one to maintain its monopoly. This is one of the most important news that's happening right now, even though I know that everybody is focused on the Mr. B stuff and all that stuff around that drama. But this is something that you need to follow closely. And this is breaking news. This just happened yesterday. And even though I don't do this, usually I just have to chime in and tell you what this is all about. This could actually profoundly change how we consume the internet and also the entire mobile ecosystem, especially on Android, but also on the iPhone, could change as a result of this most important ruling in the United States antitrust legislation. I'm gonna tell you what is going on. I'm also gonna tell you how Google actually maintained and built up its monopoly over the years and decades actually, and how this decision is gonna impact you and what you can also do about this situation. This has been developing in the United States for a while. Google, along many other big tech companies, has been investigated for their antitrust behaviors and activities. Most specifically, when it comes to Google, Google has been been closing up deals with vendors and other companies to make sure that the Google search app and Google search service would be pre-installed by default on other people's devices and their services. That would be the case for other Android vendors, for instance. It will also be the case for the Apple iPhone, and it will be the case for uh, most web browsers that would be widely available. This is how Google worked this all out. Because Android is a free and open source software, anyone can take it and use it however they want to, they do not need to ask for Google's permission. However, if you are a vendor such as Samsung or Huawei or any other mobile brand out there and you want to use Android, but you also need to cater to your customers who are most likely going to be looking for apps to download from Google Play Store, you cannot just install the Google Play Store app and then have your own browser or your own search engine by default. You have to, if you want to use just one Google app, install the entire suite of mobile services from Google, which is also going to include the Google search, Gmail, Chrome browser, and other Google apps that Google ships with that suite of services. Now that is a problem because now it enforces that your apps are by, are by default installed on a piece of operating system that is supposed to be completely free and modifiable, which it still is. Android is still modifiable, but Google builds up all of these apps that are not shipped with Android, they are not open source, they are proprietary, and it gives Google this much dominance. Then, when it comes to browsers, which Google does not necessarily own, Google has the Chrome browser and they're using the, the Google search as the default search service in the Chrome browser, Firefox and Internet Edge or the Explorer, you know, way back in the time, and also Safari, they are not forced to do that. However, Google also used to pay a lot of money, especially to Apple and, and Mozilla that develops Firefox to make sure that the Google search is selected as the default search engine. This would be pre-installed basically into the browser itself so that you would not go through some sort of a screen that will give you a first selection of search engines that you would pick from. It'll be just the default search engine. It will just be the, the, the Google. You could change it later on if you wanted to, but historically, most people are just not going to change the defaults. So that that would actually help Google maintain the search engine monopoly on the browser sphere too. And now because you're on the iPhone and you use Safari, people that use Safari will be by default using Google and Apple would charge Google dozens of billions of dollars literally every single year in order to, for Google to maintain that, that iPhone market. Now this would then consolidate in other ways because Google started off as just a search engine. They eventually started acquiring other services. They eventually became this advertising giant and had the money to buy the Gmail. They also built up the Chrome browser. Uh, then they had YouTube and other services. So now when you have a Google account, you actually have the drive and all the other things that are bundled in, which builds up that ecosystem lock-in that Google is looking for. And anytime you search for a, a web browser that you wanted to download, Google would suggest that you download Google Chrome. Or if you are on Google Chrome and you wanted to search for something, obviously Google search is going to be pre-installed. If you use any other Google service, whether that's on your phone or on desktop or, or the browser, they're going to be seamlessly integrated to make it virtually as difficult as possible for you to leave the Google ecosystem. Now in the European Union, Google has already been fined. I think now that's about 8 
billion euros that's about like 10 billion us dollars for breaching the union's antitrust laws and that was for multiple reasons one of those was that enforcement of for vendors to install all the google suite of apps but it's also the google search monopoly and now this thing in the united states we don't know how much punishment google is going to suffer as a result of this there is going to be a separate proceeding that's going to determine the penalty which is likely going to be the fine but it could also be another form of mitigation i don't think that this is going to result in a breakup of google which would be the ultimate solution of antitrust enforcement i think what this is going to result is that google will be forced to give out a selection screen to the user on first install so that users are actually encouraged to change the defaults and they're not enforced into any particular way and that will be massive because I, yes still most people will probably choose google out of the name recognition and out of the user experience but you would have at least more transparency as to that hey there are other options and it's not just google or bing now i need to tell you why google monopoly is also problematic the biggest reason is that google has too much control over what people see basically their market share globally is about 90%. It fluctuates from country to country and from time to time, but that's pretty much it. And it's huge. It, this is like by default as monopolistic as it gets. And with that level of control, it allows Google to charge more for advertising because you don't really have a competitive market. You would actually need to have more than four firms controlling less than 40% of the market in order for the market to be properly competitive. And Google owns singularly just 90% of all of it, which is totally unfair to everyone that wants to advertise on Google. Specifically, if you have a website, a product or service or app, that you want to advertise or reach customers and you don't go to Google, you are not going to be successful. You're not going to have business. You have to be on good terms with Google, which means that if Google has any deals, any changes in their terms of service, and suddenly what you are doing is no longer accepted in their policy, it can ruin your business. And there are many, many examples throughout history how many services were destroyed by what Google did, especially when Google decided to build an alternative and then used their alternative to the already mainstream option as the default option on Google services. What I'm talking most specifically about is the Google reviews thing. When you used to have the, the TripAdvisor and Yelp reviews and other things, those would usually be uh, the most go-to platforms for people to, to leave reviews on. But then Google decided that they want some of that. So they built Google uh, reviews and they obviously put Google reviews as the default uh, snippet into the Google search. And now you would suddenly see this massive drop in traffic coming to websites like Yelp or Trustpilot. That was a massive problem. It was also also massively contested, but this is what all these platforms do. Apple does this also. Like they find an app that a developer, a third party developer built and is very successful. They have all the uh, business intelligence about that because they own the iPhone platform. They have all the usage data that iPhone users give to that app. And now they can decide, oh, this app is really popular. We can build this. And we can put it as a default feature into the iPhone with the next update. This is how Apple was able to shut down a lot of third-party developers and their businesses simply out of this powerful monopolistic decision. And this is something that needs to change because we don't really consider these big tech monopolies as monopolies, but they are by definition. They are intellectual property monopolies. And that means that whatever they do, whatever they produce, they abuse their networking influence and prevent anyone else from competing with their business model or with their product. Android is a rare solution of being a product that's free and open source, which is not proprietary. It is not an intellectual property monopoly, but because Google was able to very conveniently build all of these different apps that are really required if you want to be a vendor and make different phones that would compete with Google phones, or you want to have different apps and services that would compete with Google services, you still have to pay the Google tax. You still have to go to Google. You still have to go to the Play Store and the search and the AdWords or AdSense and you still have to talk to Google and hope that they will not do something that will crush your business overnight or over a certain period of time. And this is something where your action is also very needed and required. I would recommend that you already start changing your defaults. People tend to say and Google does say that, that their search engine is the best. I think that's a very subjective merit. In some cases it is really good in terms of some useful, very relevant 
relative personalized search results that can be useful if you're looking for a restaurant near you it might be useful to have that personalization but another thing is that Google is just hyper commercialized to the point where you no longer have that genuine organic search result that will show you the internet Google will just so show you snippets and 13 ads extrapolated be in between 10 actual results and in order for you to find what you're looking for you have to go to like page 5 in order to find that genuine internet result if you search engine operator tools you can mitigate a lot of that but it's problematic and not many people know about that I think you should use more than just one search engine especially if you're looking to find real information and facts about current things that are going on I for instance use multiple search engines I use DuckDuckGo I also sometimes use Google I use other search engines that are out there and might come useful when I'm looking for things and I want to find different perspectives and I want to broaden my literature review as much as possible and I don't just constrain myself to use search engines by themselves I also use academic search tools that help me find articles and um, scientific papers that I want to use in my videos I highly encourage that also you stay away from as many Google products as you can and I know this is ironic because I'm doing this on YouTube but let's be honest there is literally like no other option other than YouTube like there are some other platforms but virtually nobody is on those platforms as opposed to how many people are on YouTube I want to reach as many people as possible with this message and if I can help people to eliminate their reliance on the big tech in any way shape or form I'm gonna be doing this on YouTube because that's the best way to do that so I recommend that you just start removing yourself from the Gmail ecosystem and you start using something like Proton Mail or Tutanota I also recommend that you do not use their drive but use something like Ante or Proton Drive find services that are free and open source that do respect your privacy I talk about a lot of these services on my channel in my videos they are very useful they are very good they are, uh, you're gonna get all the features with them that you need so I highly highly encourage you that you go out on this journey and start the big teching yourself out of this it's not just de googling because all of these big tech companies are monopolies and they're mon monopolist they want to have that dominance it's true for Apple it's true for Amazon Facebook Microsoft and all the other ones they don't respect you they don't respect your consumer rights or your privacy rights or your end user rights of any digital flavor that's it for just today's breaking news video let me know what you think about this if you want me to cover more breaking news things like this in the future I'm gonna resume to my video essays also I just want to want to be doing that I love doing that so that's not going away I just wanted to get this out and tell everybody about this because it's really important so thank you please support me on patreon I talk about all of these things on my patreon Patreon podcast. A lot of that is for free. You can get most of the newest episodes completely free. But if you want the entire bank catalog, I recommend that you actually sign up and a pledge a certain amount of support if you want to have that access and support my channel and support my production. Thank you again. Have a good one and goodbye.